Know some young niggas like to game. Know some young niggas like to game. She give me head, I call her mother brain. Girl, I'm going in at 60 frames. I don't need no way you game. Why you game? If you ain't out this dick collecting rings. Don't disrespect me, cause it game. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Love C. Shouted, coming at y'all with another video today, man. And today, I'm looking out for my trash bags, dog. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. All y'all boys out here with these garbage ass records these super negative records bro i'm about to look out for y'all boys today man because it's still early in the year and you got plenty of time you got plenty of time to repair your record but it is not even december yet you got time bro today you got time head at but anyway man you got to keep your record right, bro, because this year it's on Front Street, bro. Your record is there on Front Street for everybody to see, bro. So you got to come out that bit with a good, solid record so you can get some respect when you get on the court. Because I ain't even going to lie, bro. When I get on the court and I see that your, ne your record is like double negative, bro, I'm playing with you, dog. I'm sorry. I'm playing with you. I'm sagging off you. I'm doing ISO moves just because when I could just easily pull up for a three bro like i'm literally playing with you bro i do not take you seriously bro and i know that that just can't be a good feeling bro you know what i'm saying and i know how it feels bro my record last year was terrible in the beginning bro i started off with a terrible record in 2k17 but i ended the year with a 66 percent win percentage bro and right now currently i have a 76 percent win percentage bro you know what i'm saying I get W's out here, bro, but it it wasn't always like this, bro. Even my even my record in 2K16 was trash, bro. I never repaired that shit, bro. But that was that was just when I was new. I was a new nigga back then, bro. I know what the fuck I'm doing now. But yeah, man, I got some good solid tips for y'all in this video today, man. This will be a long video, bro. I'm tell you that right now. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but if your record is trash and you own this video, you have absolutely no room to be sitting there talking about. Nah, I'm in the video too long. No, no, nigga, you need this video. I ain't gonna tell you nothing that you don't need, sir. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna be breaking it down in the two main points, bro. One is all about your lineup. You have to have a solid lineup. And two, it's all about your mindset, bro. It take it take mental toughness to win in this game, bro. And you got to be keyed in, bro. You got to be focused, man. But anyway, I'm gonna break those two points down very deeply, man. So pay attention. Don't fast forward. Make sure you don't miss a thing, bro. And make sure you pay attention to these game plays too, because they go hand in hand with what I'm about to discuss with y'all boys today. Some of these game plays, I'm going slap the fuck off, and I got most of the points. In other games, I'm just I'm just playing help, man. I'm just playing a support role, bro. But anyway, I'm gonna get into that shit later, bro, because that is one of my main points right there, man. But yeah, man, let's go ahead and get into the first segment. Did I mention that I know this by experience? <laughs> okay, I thought I did. But, bro, the biggest rule in this whole ordeal, the biggest rule, you have to know this. Stop playing with randoms. Stop playing with randoms today right now right now stop playing with randoms bro the reason that you're losing most of the time is because of randoms i know this because that's all i used to play with bro all i used to do is just hop on and just play with randoms bro because i remember when i first got into 2k bro i came in this bitch watching so and he used to he used to get me with oh i'm so good bro all i do is play with randoms bro and i'd be dropping the whole 20. so of course i thought okay well shit, i i don't, I don't need no team then i can just hop on with randoms bro and do my thing but here's the problem though randoms don't give a fuck about the w randoms just they just want to hop on and play honestly bro they just casual niggas who just hop on and play they do not care about taking w's all they want to do is just 
hop on and see how many points they can score. They don't care about if they actually win the game. They just want to see how many points they can score, bro. I know this because it just shows in the way that they play. They don't care about getting a W, bro. You can be a pure sharpshooter and they can, you know what I'm saying, you can have a playmaker on your team and this dude could be a fucking dribble guy, dribbling and dribbling and dribbling, dribbling the whole shot clock out, actually killing niggas and, and because he's killing people, he's drawing a lot of attention and he leaves you wide the fuck open like your man leaves you open trying to help out with him and this nigga will not pass you the ball because he's a random bro he don't care about the w all he care about is oh i just broke this nigga ankles let me finish the play like he don't care about getting that w bro stop playing with randoms bro now i know that's easier said than done because if you're new to the community if you're new to the game you just got the game you don't know anybody well i mean yeah you have to play with randoms because mind you I had to play with random just like everybody else did and one day I just happened to come across Geodude like dead ass like I met Geodude in, in 2k16 and like I was getting my ass demolished before I met this nigga and, like that nigga like, just came out of nowhere him and Dion like matter of fact I got the video on here of the day that I met him bro like I'll leave the link in the description of when I first met Geodude. It's very interesting. You can see how garbage I was. <laughs> but I had that IQ though. I had that IQ though, man. But for all y'all boys who just starting the game off, I know that y'all have to play with randoms right now. But pay attention to the randoms that you playing with. You have to make some friends, bro. Pay attention to the randoms that you play with. If you come against a random that's good, if you find you a, a random that's actually good, that actually has some IQ, or just that motherfucking good. If you're a dribble guard, that nigga can drive and call some attention, add him as a friend. Send him a friend's request. You know what I'm saying? You got to hold your own in these games with these randoms, because if you do, they are more obliged to accept the friend's request. And then, there goes... The next step of getting this man into the party now. Y'all boys getting in the party chat and chopping it up. And you actually telling him, okay, I see you're good at dribbling, but hey, I'm good at shooting. Pass me the ball back when you draw in all that attention and we can get these W's, bro. You know what I'm saying? Be sociable, bro. Make friends, bro. Pay attention to who's good and who's not. Pay attention to who's got a little bit of IQ and make friends, bro. You got to make friends, bro. Ever since I ever since I made friends on this bitch, bro, I will not play with randoms. Now, of course, I understand. You know, so I'm just like everybody else, bro. There's those nights where I just get on and I be like, man, I really want to play 2K. And I be like, fuck it, my friends ain't on. I'm just going to play with some randoms real quick, bro. Like, I've tried to fight the urge of that this year, but I, I don't play with randoms this year, though, bro. Like, I may have played a few, like a handful of games with some randoms. But, like, for the most part, I do not play the games with randoms. I'd be like, bro, my niggas ain't online. Fuck it, I'm not playing tonight, bro. The only time I really will, like, play with randoms and, like, feel somewhat comfortable playing with them is in the stage. And that's because there's a VC on the line. So, maybe this nigga is, like, he, he's, he's not, he's not going to do some stupid shit because his money's on the line. You know what I'm saying? If money's on the line, niggas are less obliged to do stupid shit. But that's neither here nor there. Most of y'all are hopping in the park. So if you're in the park, no randoms ever. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's take it back a few notches. Now, remember I said you got to hold your own in these games when you're playing with these randoms so that if you do have a chance to make some friends, they'll actually accept the friends request because they see that you're good too. One of the biggest mistakes that you can make is making the wrong archetype. Now, when I say the wrong archetype, I ain't mean just making a garbage archetype i mean making an archetype that ain't good for your play style making an archetype that you're just not good at using period you know what i'm saying just for example last year i started the off with a playmaker big mistake i was not good with a playmaker like it is what it is and i ain't gonna say that i was like garbage with him it's just that i couldn't get buckets like that bro and like furthermore being that geo dude was a better dribbler than me i usually let him run point so I would spot up at the three with a playmaker, and when I would pull up, he was useless. Even with perfect releases, they didn't give me no greens. So was, he was useless, bro. It wasn't it wasn't a good position for me, bro. I was good at getting dimes and shit like that. Like I was good at driving and kicking and getting getting you know 
get buckets for other people and shit like that. But like, as far as those clutch games where I need to score, like, nah, like I just wasn't good with it, with that nigga, bro. It is what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? But with that play style that I did have, and that the way we was running our offense, I figured, okay. Let me make a stretch big, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm always spotted up at the three, and I've never been able to shoot threes like that. So let me just make a stretch big. And <laughs> you see, I never, I said, I never been able to shoot threes like that. The whole reason I made a playmaker in the beginning was because on 2K16, they took away speed boosting before I could speed boost. So I just wanted to know what it felt like to be able to speed boost. So I didn't really even have scoring in mind. All I had in mind was I just want to dribble. I just want to dribble. I want to speed boost. I want to kill niggas. I'll get the downs. Fuck scoring. But you know, when you're a YouTuber, you got to fucking score. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas don't want to watch downs because you know that's too much IQ. People don't like to see IQ. People don't like to watch real basketball. They just want to see dribble guy mixtapes if you're a playmaker. So you know, I say fuck it. I'm gonna stay in my lane, bro. I'm gonna make this motherfucking sharpshooter make this stretch big. Once I make that stretch big, bro shit changed now i ain't gonna say that it was easy in the beginning i was garbage with that nigga in the beginning but once i learned how to play the position of stretch big oh my god bro oh my god you know what i'm saying it was a fucking rap bro you know what i'm saying get out here and experiment with different archetypes bro sit down have a talk with yourself figure out what exactly it is that you want to do on the court bro and figure out the best build for that figure out how long you want his arms to be how strong you want him to be how fast you want him to be all that shit bro put that man together and do work master your player bro master him bro because when you master your player you ain't got to worry about what nobody else doing on the court because you know what you gonna do you know what i'm saying just keep in mind size does matter me personally i can't be out here with no small ass my player bro my playmaker last year was 6-4, and he used to get bullied, bro. He used to get bullied. He used to get bullied. Man, he used to get bullied. You know what I'm saying? I can't have no small ass my player. That's why my playmaker, I mean, that's why my sharpshooter this year, he's 6-9 and 220 pounds. Because even my stretch big at 180 pounds last year, he was good at shooting, but he used to get bullied in the paint. I got tired of getting bullied in the paint, bro. So I put some weight on this nigga. I did sacrifice some speed, but that little nigga strong, though. This nigga strong. <laughs> this small boy is strong, bro. I do not get bullied in the paint. Now, if there's a, a big beefy center, this nigga 300 pounds, of course I can't do nothing with that nigga. But size does matter in this game. Now, don't take my word for that because... Some of you may be better with a smaller my player. Some of you may like to be fast. Some of you may be better with a, a faster my player. Me, I done got used to being slow. So being slow don't really bother me. But I mean, I would like to be fast. But if I was going to be fast, then I wasn't going to be strong too. So it's, it's all a compromise about what you think is more important when it comes to your my player. Me, I got tired of getting bullied versus being strong, so I made this nigga strong. Look at me, bro. This nigga cannot get past me, bro. I'm too strong for him. Too strong for this young man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but size does matter, bro. Size does matter, but how you want your man to work, though? How do you want your man to work? That's a question that you got to figure out, man. Now, once you get past all that, all you got to worry about now is what kind of lineup you going to run. Now, me, I've noticed since last year and this year as well, bro, I've had the most success running a center. You always need a center. I don't care what nobody says. Listen to me. You need a center. Find you a center. You need to be looking for good centers, bro. You got to have somebody in the paint getting boards, being a bully. Pushing niggas around, dunking on folks when you can't get a three, all that good shit. You got to have your big bully in that paint, but always, bro. I've also had a lot of success running two niggas that can shoot. You got to have more than one nigga that can shoot threes for various reasons, bro. Like, for one, if one shooting hand goes cold, 
the other man can shoot threes, bro. There's been plenty of games where, like, I'm just shooting straight does, and I be like, okay, Gio, dude, I can't shoot no more. You got to take over. And then there be games where he can't shoot, and he be like, okay, bro, I got to get you open, bro. Set, set, love, see off ball so we can get him open, bro, because I can't shoot. You know what I'm saying? It, it just be like that sometimes. But mainly it allows you to stretch the floor because if they got two people to worry about behind the three-point line, ain't nobody going to sag off of these two niggas, and it leaves the paint open. If somebody wants to isolate, like if you got if you got a stretch big, so you got three niggas that can shoot, the playmaking sharpshooter he can iso, and I say playmaking sharpshooter because I feel like that's the best playmaker on the game because he can shoot threes more consistently than anyone, and he can still drive. You know what I'm saying? But if he calls iso, ain't nobody gonna sag off of that stretch big or that pure sharpshooter or nigga with the sharpshooter primary which is the two man because they know that's an automatic dime if they sag so so whoever is against that playmaker he got to clamp the fuck up bro because he gonna get take to he gonna get taken to the rack or he gonna get jade in his fucking mouth either way he got to guard that nigga it stretches the floor but if you running let's say uh, the playmaker let's let's say the the sharpshooting playmaker the point guard let's let's say you got him and then you got two athletic finishers like how I got in this game play right here if he call iso he ain't getting in that paint because they're gonna sag off of them two niggas you know what I'm saying and when he passes to him in the corner they ain't gonna hit no three unless they just that good at shooting and the game want to cheat for them and give them a green light in which I've seen it happen bro Geo dude hits threes with every center he got bro that shit be pissing me off even with him on my team I swear to god bro I hate that shit but yeah bro you got to have two shooters bro at least two shooters bro that that way you can stretch the floor and have one nigga to feed if the other hand get cold you know what I'm saying it's the best way to run that shit bro but I'm gonna go ahead and get into the last segment bro Now, it ain't gonna take me long to cover this, bro, because this is just everyday common sense shit, bro. Now, the main thing that be getting a lot of y'all niggas, bro, y'all just be playing too much, bro. Y'all be playing around. And I get it, bro. Everybody gets on the game because they want to have fun. That is the only reason we want to get on the game, because we want to have fun. But, like, you have to be serious to some extent, though, bro. You have to be serious when it comes to this shit. If you out here trying to take Ws and have a, a good record, bro, like, I don't play with niggas, bro. Like, now... <laughs> I play with niggas like if they got a garbage record because I mean hey this, this guy's garbage I can play with him a little bit but like for the most part like I'm not really trying to play with him too much like even with me playing with you it's like okay let me get an ISO but like nigga I'm still trying to get my bucket so bro you got you got to be serious bro you got to be you got to have that W on your mind at all times even if you are playing around with niggas and you know being a bully and shit like that bro you know what I'm saying like, we done lost so many fucking games, like, with Geo Dude last year and shit. I used to get on him all the fucking time because 2K17 was so fucking easy, bro. And I'm like, bro, like, why you sitting up here playing and shit and trying to have fun, nigga? We're in a close game with bum-ass niggas, bro. And you know how much this game be cheating, bro. You know how they let niggas hit contested shots and shit like that. Like, that shit is, like, too consistent. So... Yeah, you playing around and, and getting in a close game with some bum-ass niggas. Meanwhile, it's up to the last three-pointer, and this motherfucker hit a contested three-pointer in your, in your fucking face, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's the shit I be talking about, bro. So you got, you got to play serious, bro. You got to have that W on your mind at all times, bro. And the biggest thing about that is playing defense, bro. You have to play defense. Clamp the fuck up, nigga. Defense wins championships. Offense sells tickets, bro. That's the realest shit. I've ever heard, bro. That's some real ass shit. You got to clamp up on niggas, bro. And I mean, you got to really, you got to pay attention, bro. You got to, when, when the when the game starts, bro, you got to know what you're going up against, bro, so you know how to guard him. Pay attention to this man's archetype so you know how to guard him. If he's a slasher, you know he ain't about to be pulling no threes. Back the fuck up off him. Guard him at the mid range. That's, the slashers are the easiest niggas to guard on the game, bro. They can't shoot threes and they're useless if they can't get to the fucking paint, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I love going against slashes, bro. Every time I go against a slash, I'll be like, oh, you're not scoring. I don't even care if he, his record's good. I'd be like, bro, you're not scoring, bro, because I know how to guard you. You're not getting in the fucking paint. Now, if I get in the paint, then, yeah, he'll get that animation of getting a posterizer, but if you guard him at the mid-range, that takes him out of the animation zone, and that takes him out of his comfort zone, too, because he can't shoot threes. And, you know, 
of course, with a sharpshooter, any kind of sharpshooter, don't give the nigga no space. If, if, if a nigga can shoot, give him no fucking space. Hug this nigga the whole fucking way. You see how I'm hugging this nigga in this clip right here. Hugging the shit out of this nigga, boy. He don't get no space because he a sharpshooter. You know what I'm saying? And then anybody who's a paint player, you got to guard that nigga in the paint. You got to keep him out in the paint. Put your right stick into him. Deny him position. Period, bro. It's just that simple, bro. You know what I'm saying? Defense is not hard. You just got to pay attention to the nigga archetype, how he play with that archetype, and adjust to those moves and clamp his shit up, bro. It is not hard. From that point on, it's all about teamwork, bro. You got to lean on your team. You got to trust your team, bro. You got to trust the niggas that you requested from being randoms in the park, bro. You got to trust them. You got to get in party chat. Y'all got to communicate, bro. Y'all got to communicate. Y'all got to know y'all roles, bro. If you a sharpshooter, you ain't got no business driving. If you a, if you a slasher, you ain't got no business trying to shoot threes or none of that bullshit, bro. Know your roles, stay in your lane, and do your job, bro. And trust your boys to do their jobs, bro. And just communicate, bro. Just because this nigga good don't mean that he don't make mistakes, bro. I done had to tell Gio do plenty of times, nigga, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. They sagging on me. They sagging on me. You got to let them know. Sometimes niggas don't see you. Sometimes I get in the zone, bro. I be trying so hard to get a three. I don't even realize that's a nigga open in the paint. When I got two niggas on me, bro, just because I feel like I can soft them niggas up. I just be in the zone, bro. But you got to talk, man. You got to communicate, bro. Y'all got to keep that teamwork going, bro. Use your team, bro. Some games you going to do good. Some games you ain't going to do that good, bro. Sometimes it ain't your game. If it's your homeboy game, let him have his game. If he got the hot hand give him that shit feed him bro he gonna love you for it bro and it's gonna make y'all's game that much more deadly now <laughs> i can't leave without giving y'all this last tip but oh my this one right here bro this one is so big bro this shit done saved my ass oh my god it done saved my ass bro the best thing you can do on here to preserve your record, bro, is know when to quit. Yes, I said it. Know when to quit. Now, I'm not talking about quitting mid-game, because, I mean, that's an L regardless, bro. But when I say know when to quit, bro, like, I mean, like, if you're having a bad night, just give it up. Okay? Give it up. Sometimes you're going to have an off day. And on the other hand, sometimes 2K just going to cheat you. If you're good, 2K is going to cheat you at some point, bro. You're not going to just, bro, like, they, like, I really, like, bro, I feel like, I dead ass feel like when a nigga be doing good as fuck, bro, when a nigga shooting straight greens and shit, I feel like there's literally somebody at 2K headquarters with, like, a fucking security room full of a bunch of park games sitting on a damn big ass wall bro and every time they see a nigga doing too good it be a nigga like you know bro I like the motherfucking toy story man dog the, the little monkey in toy story bro you know what i'm talking about bro i i literally feel like it be a nigga like that bro like he just literally sabotage you because you're doing too fucking good bro like i'm not i don't know i could be tripping bro but like i literally feel like that bro but like if i be having those nights where the game just be trolling me bro while i'm shooting perfect releases and they're not giving me no greens and they're not letting any shots fall and i'm just like wondering what the hell going on bro and sometimes you just got to quit if you're having a rough night like that just quit bro one thing i've noticed about this game bro after 9 p.m the game makes no sense i'm dead ass at the 9 p.m eastern time the game makes absolutely no sense bro the game literally feels like it just be cheating for randoms bro it be cheating for garbage ass niggas making the game easy for them against comp and shit bro for no fucking reason bro like i'm all the l's that i took most of the l's that i've taken has been after nine o'clock p.m i swear to god bro that's what, like, when you, I don't know if any of you have ever heard it in my videos, I'd be like, bro, it's officially amateur hour. It is amateur hour. That's what I mean by that. After 9 o'clock, bro, I do not like playing 2K18, bro. That's amateur hour. Because it feels like, bro, they just don't reward niggas for doing what the game is telling you to do. I'm using my shot meter properly, but if you just, you, you cheat me out of green lights, bro. Why are you doing this to me, bro? And at that point, it's time to turn the game off, bro. 
Like, I have a rule of thumb. If I lose three games in a row, I'm done for the night. Dead ass. You have to do that sometimes. If you lose three games in a row, you done for the night. Because if you losing that fucking bad, if you on that bad of a win, if you on that bad of a losing streak, most likely you're not going to be able to fight through that. And it's best to just turn the fucking game off, man. But anyway, man, it's your boy Love Seat Shawty. I appreciate y'all boys for watching this video, man. If you made it to the end, hit that like button, man, and share this video with your friends, especially if his record is garbage, sir. You know what I'm saying? Work together, get y'all shit back right, man, because I will clown you if you come my way. Fair warning. Peace out!